Now we're going to look at MVL versus Alexienko. MVL played a unusual opening because, you know, it's over. And Alexienko said, say what? And then after move 10, Alexienko was lost. He was lost the whole game. Frankly, terrible. Now, many people are saying, referencing Trump there, many people are saying Alexienko lost on purpose to MVL because he wants MVL to win the tournament. So he was just lost right away and lost with no fight. Also, I'm kidding. Okay. Huh? Uh, I'm not kidding. What? Oh, some people... Acu when I say some people, I'm not grandmasters, the gawking mm. rabble. Uh. They accused Alexienko of losing on purpose to Napomniachi so he'd win the event. Because he played... He was like lost after move 11. Uh, okay. This game, he was also lost after move 11. The truth hurts. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... White played the fantasy variation. Okay? What move is the fantasy variation for White here? And don't ever play it. What move? I don't know. And don't ever play it. <laughs> oh, don't ever play it. Mm -hmm. F3? Correct. <laughs> now, there's two ways to play against this. You can do Vishwa nothing. That's, yeah. what, that's what Anand does. And just play like E6, Knight F6 move the queen, move the bishop, and just say, well, this is ridiculous. And because MVL is French, he wants to transpose to a French. So for example, after here, we could do this, and you've had this position with black, because mm -hmm. it's a French. But Alex Sienko didn't want to do that because MVL is French. He doesn't want to retreat against a Frenchman. Ridiculous. Okay, so... <clears throat> Black played the aggressive way, which is takes, takes, and e5. And I know this line, but I don't know. Uh, I'm not a big fan of what Black did, of what White did. I'm sorry. Yeah, Black did. That's right. Now, there's a there's an interesting game in this line from, I think it's 2010, but don't quote me. I'm within a year. It's 2009, 10, or 11. I think it's 10. Might be 11. Anyway, could be 12. There was a game in the U.S. Junior Championship in a playoff. Now, in the U.S. Junior Championship, Shankland lost his first two games. And in round three, he was dead lost, like plus five for his opponent. But he turned it around and won. Then he tied for first with Ray Robson and somebody you guys haven't heard of. And they had some three-way action, okay? And then I think the cops showed up, but it, it was fine. Anyway, in the final final, Shanklin played Robson because the other guy got knocked out. And this happened. And Ray Robson was, was white, and he got crushed. He got smashed. So Ray really tried hard to win the playoff, but trying is the first step to failure. I don't know what year it was, 2010, 11... And Shanklin became the U.S. Junior Champion. Frankly, ridiculous. Okay. Now, Knight F3. Now, I have a book from before you were born, mm -hmm. and the main move was Bishop E6. Now, for the audience that's confused, if you take, Black wins immediately. What's the winning move for Black, Karen? Snake Oil Scrub gifted a sub. Hooray! Mm -hmm. Go, everybody. Let's see. Who was your guest? She was walking outside and she was like crying. And I said, come in. And I told her about my clothing line and it has new shoes. And she said, I, I feel terrible. It's raining. But my feet, my feet, I can walk in the Hal Himalayan walking shoe. And then she decided to sit down next to me and watch the stream. Mm -hmm. I don't know what her name is. I just call her Karen because she was crying outside of I'm not sure. Maybe Queen A5. Close. By the way, do you know uh, what I was referencing there? Mm -mm. Seinfeld. That's when Julia Louis-Dreyfus met um, Peterman. She was like walking and, and then he they bumped into each other and he hired her. I then she made all that long there. speech. I can't remember the speech then. Yeah, sorry. I don't know then. I told that to Hikaru. He understood everything. 
Uh, thanks, Samuel Mayfield, for subscribing. Good, good. Thanks, Snake Oil Scrub, for gifting a sub. Anybody? Uh, I lost miserably. You can have a refund. That is correct. Whose chopper is? What? Turn all these planes on a snake. Yeah. The Urban Sombrero, that's right. Congratulations. On the job, done. That's what Peterman said. That was great. Peterman went to Burma, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, I know it's called Myanmar. It'll always be Burma to me. And then uh, Julie Louis-Dreyfus was in charge of the catalog. And then she was, she was the president and so forth, many episodes. Then he came back. And he's like... Okay, you're relieved and I'm taking over again. She said, stock options? He goes, no, no. And then he <laughs> says, thanks for a job. Done. <laughs> Perfect. Um, okay, so you said this. I make you do the other check. Let's That's see right. Bam. And this was played first in the famous game. Uh. <laughs> gotcha versus bitch. <laughs> So you, moving your king is shallow and pedantic, but it's forced. Yeah. Because if you go here, you, you get beat, right? You get beat like when Danny Wrench talks about Lee Chess. Hmm? Danny Wrench was trash talking the Lee Chess guy. Then he made an apology video. Oh, really? Yeah, he was misinformed. And then it was obviously like a lawyer statement. He was reading it. So that was good. Hi, Danny. What did he apologize for? I didn't actually see what he said. He was talking, like, the, the chess.com, people who founded chess.com, mm -hmm. and the guy who founded Lee Chess, yeah. they're like, that's son. They're, they were friends before the sites mm -hmm. existed. Okay. They were doing stuff together. And then they went their separate ways and built the two best chess sites. And Danny was explaining what happened, and then he had to explain that that didn't happen. You know, he, he was told the wrong stuff. I didn't know that they knew each other and they were working together. I didn't know any of that. Also, I didn't know after Danny said it because I wasn't watching. I wasn't There's a this. podcast with Hikaru and Gotham Chess. Mm -hmm. And they had Danny as their guest. And they were talking about Lee Chess. And Danny said stuff that wasn't true. Then he made a video saying that wasn't true. This is what's true. Like he talked to everybody and they're like, no, that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. All right. And now we can go on to the next drama. You know, where do I drop this Karen off after the stream. I don't know. <laughs> um, let's see. I didn't know any of that, but I saw it on Reddit today, so I know it's true. Horsey goes L shape subscribed. That was recent. A recent. The apology video was today or yesterday. Oh, okay. I don't know when the. Uh, I I didn't watch the podcast. I don't even know what he's apologizing for. Mm -hmm. Uh. Apocalypse Now, the horror, the horror. Yeah. So it's funny. When 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 Elaine buys an eight thousand dollar hat or six thousand dollars by accident, they're gonna fire her. So she goes to Burma so Peterman can sign that it was okay. And when she's there, this um Burma woman comes in and he yells at her in a foreign language and she runs away. Mm -hmm. And he says, You you speak Burmese? And Peter said, no, that was just gibberish. <laughs> All right. Okay, so you can't do that. And this is reminiscent, obviously, of the variation in the King's Gambit, right, which I play with black. I play D5, and this loses to this. This is even more losing than the previous example. Yeah. In the King's Gambit, you don't do that unless your knight is here. Then you still don't do it. All right. Okay, so knight f3. Now you can play bishop e6 if you want, but he played this. c3, bishop c4. The thing is, probably Alexienko knew some stuff, but you don't really study this line because MVL plays the advanced variation every game. Mm -hmm. So Alexienko was booked to the teeth on the advanced variation. And he's like, wait, the fantasy variation? Ridiculous. Okay. In Soviet Russia, uh, fantasy plays you. And Karen plays fantasy five. Okay. Not much. Queen C7, eh, I'm not a fan of that. 
And this is just prepped by MVL. Right, and this looks good for black because this pawn is hanging. And that's probably what Alexienko thought, that he wouldn't take that. The problem is after bishop f4, taking the pawn isn't very good. There's too much compensation. So he, he played queen h5, which puts it in h. But the point of Alexienko's play was he thought this pawn was attacked. But if you take it, white has the two bishops, knight d2. White has three pieces out to one. White has three open files. And f7 is very weak. If you play the obvious knight d2, I shockingly take with the king. Right? The first time I saw a shocking move like this on a blue board, I was actually playing chess on Venus. Yeah. Did you get any of that? Maybe. There's that ban ban banana ram. Maybe. That's the remake. Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know the name of the other people. By all the words I said, you could figure it out. Kind of. Shocking blue. I was, yeah. 1970. I was half listening. Yeah. I was right. looking at the chat. That's more than usual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, I got it. She was trying to figure out where she's going to sleep tonight. So now mm -hmm. I got the two bishops. I got some rook coming to E1 check. F7's weak. Black's development is shallow and pedantic. Okay. Shallow. Mm -hmm. So white has a monster advantage. So Alexienko probably saw that now, and he wanted to keep this pawn here because it's weak, and then you can't attack his king on the e-file. Knight d2, castles. And I was really impressed in this position. I've never been so impressed, ever. MVL made a move I would never consider, and the engine said it was great. And I was like, what? The engine said, great move. I would never think of this move. Never. So I was very impressed. $3. It's not Seuss. It's Susie. Not Seuss. Elaine and Susie. Susie and Elaine. You ready for this move? I don't yeah. think you're ready. Because I'm not ready and I saw it. You watching? Mm -hmm. Rick G1, the engine says that's great. Now, obviously, MVL is familiar with Matt Larson. So he wants to play G4, but it wasn't protected. Now it is. Then it's not clear where to put the queen. And then G5 and E5 are annoying, especially G5, because it doesn't get D5. And if you take the queen, which he did, you take with a you whoops, you take with a pawn, and now you're all over him like Oprah on self-promotion. So Rick G1 was great. Great move. Okay, he played G6, not too good. Yeah. And this is just fantastic for White. Two bishops. Uh his rook on D1 is great. Black's rooks haven't moved yet. F7's a target. It's a very bad position for black. B5 attacking the bishop. Knight D7. He takes on F7. Now, did he see bishop F7? I don't know. If he didn't... Now, let me explain something to the gawking rabble, which is all of you. Crazy Viking 33 subscribed. If this was the game, Nopomniachi versus Alexienko from a couple rounds ago... The people who are the conspiracy theorists, they would have said, oh, he lost on purpose. He played this absurd blunder with the simple winning tactic. I don't know if he didn't see it or he did see it and thought the resulting position was fine. Yeah. Now, what would the Indigo girls say about the resulting position? I don't know. It's closer to fine. I can't stand that band. It's only 30 years old. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> that song okay so now the king is overworked <laughs> like karen right sweetie and i am overworked See? okay so this is tactics 101 bishop takes rook takes white's up a pawn it's a passed pawn white's rook is on the seventh rank it's over robert e 630 gifted a sub grandmaster gus gifted a sub the more subs you gift the more subs we have. Tautology 101. Okay. 
And, I mean, nothing much happened in the game, except I wouldn't have resigned when Alexienko did. However, there was actually a problem getting the moves this game. A lot of people thought he resigned before they were having a transmission issue. So he resigned a lot later than originally, you know, scheduled. Now, <clears throat> the French GMs are always like, MVL, mwah, MVL's the greatest. We love MVL. Right? And I don't know who's playing in the tournament, but go MVL. Allez! And so they were, like, praising him like they should. You know, all kinds of, you know, I mean, ridiculous. He played a good game. Philosophically unsound. Frankly, terrible. You know who's philosophically unsound? Man, if you get this joke, you ain't going to get this joke. This really is, a, this is like a one in a million. Okay. A lot of, okay. Yeah. Can I have a bigger hint? No, no. When I say you, I mean the whole stream mm. and like the whole world. Right. Oh. Right. And the, the reason I'm making the joke is philosophically unsound. Subscribed. Right. So, uh, my good friend, walk a flock of flame, right? It's philosophically unsound that he keeps talking about SK and hardened to pain. In philosophy, who's SK? SK? I go hard in the something, 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 something. Yo, yo, yo. Right. So we're in Kierkegaard. Yeah. 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 Was that even a joke? No. You, you. It's very hard to know the lyrics to "Harden to Paint." And to have heard of Soren Kierkegaard. That's a very small subset of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you SK the Great? To... No. Now, seriously, did SK go hard into pain? Oh. And you know who his best friend was? SK? Mm -mm. Gucci. Okay. For a trillion dollars, what's Gucci's last name? Me. Correct. Yes, we have $2 trillion. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, let me tell you the French GMs were falling over all over themselves explaining how great this move was. Now, I'll get to it. C4 is explosive. Okay. Now, somehow on Twitter... The French GMs are like, this is the greatest move in the history of chess. The next move. I mean, I don't even like the move. I don't. I wouldn't play the move. I've seen the game. I wouldn't play the move. I don't like the move at all. The move's not even listed in the engine as one of the top three moves. Mm -hmm. But they were like, this shows that MVL is a genius. Fine. Played Rook D1 trading Rooks. Which I don't like. I think it's better for white with the rooks on. And they're like, oh yeah, his understanding and you know so forth. Okay. I mean white's winning either way. Now, this pawn structure here, who does that favor? White or black? Um It seems, well, I don't really know, but I guess we'll have to guess and give a reason. Mm -hmm. seems like um, black because pawns are more advanced. Close. Oh. It's white okay, but because white. the bishop's on the same color of the pawns, that's bad. Oh, okay. So white can take all these pawns, and white, black can never take these pawns. So this bishop has to babysit. Oh, I see. Right, and you, you, you know about babies. Do you want to sit? No. no. <laughs> so you, you want pawns on the opposite color of your bishop. So white spawn structure is better over here. So th th these pawns are the safest pawns ever. And these are just, I have to babysit them. Now, 
I have a funny story about 40 years ago. Really was 40 years ago. It was more than 40. It was about 41 years ago. I was playing in Chicago in a big tournament, like probably under 1,200 or under 1,300. I don't know. And I had this pawn structure <clears throat> where it was these three against these three. I was white, but it was the same pawn structure. Mm -hmm. And I had a bishop on the white square. Okay. And he had a bishop on the white square. And on the queen side, this is the king side because it's all reversed. He had a passed pawn and his king was over there. And his bishop was over there and he thought I was dead lost. And when his bishop and king were over there, I played here winning. Because I'm threatening this. And if he takes it, B, and I, and I won. Uh, I actually won the game when I had three pawns to four because he didn't see my trick. This trick doesn't exist here because the bishop's on a dark square. Okay, so now MVL can concentrate on the king's side, but it seems like it's hard to break through. And e5 seems very dangerous for white because once he plays e5, king e4, what does he do? So it seems risky to play e5, but that's, that's fine. Yeah, black can't do very much. Yeah. And here he resigned. Now I was thinking, how does white win? And then I look at engines and it's like plus a billion. It's like black should have resigned before. And I don't know how to win. And th the way the engine wants you to win is to put black in Zugzwan. So obviously if that's the way to win, I don't understand why you're resigning because, but anyway, so here's how you win. You play bishop here, attacking the pawn, and black goes bishop here, bishop here, bishop here, bishop here, bishop here. Then white plays bishop d6, and black goes bishop here, bishop here, bishop here, bishop here. He can't move his king because I, then I win. Then you play bishop c7. So I'll give you an example of the, the winning technique. Okay. Okay, so the bishop can't move, nothing can move. So you have to go here. That way you can't play this because king takes bishop. Reminiscent of Fisher Feingold, 1963. Now you move the bishop, threatening to play king here. So you have to go back to e6, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, then this, this position is Zugzwan. Because if the king moves, this wins. If the bishop moves, this wins. So now you just play h3 or h4 and you win. And, and black can't move. Moving the king, king here resigns. Moving the bishop, bishop here, bishop here resigns. Now I agree that white is completely winning and black is in total Zugzwan, but I still wouldn't resign. There's a lot of resigning this round, right? Frankly, terrible. Mm -hmm. And when people resigned... And the gawking rabble, and me, didn't understand why he would resign so early. Everybody got mad. <clears throat> I even got a text from Matt Larson about another game where there was an early resignation. And I said, yeah, I don't know. And that's the one people were the maddest about. Now, when people resign in this tournament, the engines always say, good resignation. You're getting killed. But humans are like, why do you resign? I want to see the, re you know. Now, there's a big push over the last 10 years, and the push has gone down because of COVID, so nobody cares anymore, that resigning shouldn't be allowed because you can't resign in any other sport. You know, you're playing baseball, you're down 12-0, you can't resign, right? So in chess, to make the game more popular, right, you know, grow the game, <clears throat> no resigning. That way the gawking rabble, when they watch the game, it's going to end with a flag falling or a checkmate, and you guys understand that. Sometimes you don't know why it's checkmate, but if it is checkmate, and you're like, oh, then, okay. So resigning at the very top level makes the game difficult to understand for lower-rated players, occasionally higher-rated players. And I have a couple of stories, because I always do. I was at the World Open before you guys were born, and a game ended. I looked at the position and I was like, black resigned here? It was a double rook ending even pawns. 
and Black had triple pawns. So technically he was losing, but you would never resign. Ever. And it was two Grand Masters playing, and they left, and the board was still set up. And my good friend Boris Men showed up. He's about the same rating as BBDs and I am. I haven't seen him in like 20 years. And I said, why did Black resign? And he looked at me and said, too much talent. And occasionally, super GMs resign, and they're not losing. Timon did it. Kramnik did it. And too much talent. Um, well, it wasn't Kramnik, it was Fiddler. Fiddler's resigned at least twice when he wasn't losing. Or he was, like, worse. He likes to resign when he's playing another player of his caliber and he's worse. Well, I resign. All right. Resigning is, frankly, ridiculous. Here it's ridiculous, too. But the engine doesn't agree with me. The engine's like, White's totally winning. Of course you should resign. But you have to know what the winning technique is. Lower-rated players would furrow their brow in a vain attempt to understand the situation. If I was black, I'd play for winning against a low-rated player. So, Yeah, Shanklin resigned, and when he resigned, Geary said this position's a draw. Right. And then Magnus had the greatest burn of all time, ever. I told you this story. Shanklin resigned in a drawn position against Geary. A few months later, on the other side of the board the same position was going to occur. It hadn't occurred yet, but Magnus is like, here, 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 like he's analyzing the game on the internet. Here, 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 he said. And then uh, it's a drawn position, but Black will resign. Because he was just making fun of Shankland. I mean, it was a genius joke. Yeah. Very smart. Okay, so the game's over. Black resigned. And the engine says, yep, White's plus 10. All right. I mean, why is a better king, a passed pawn? But you have to win somehow. You got to break on through. Break on through. Yeah, 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 yeah. What song? Who's the group? Break on through. Yeah, what group? I don't know. Right there. The Doors. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. The Who. Boo, boo. I couldn't think boo, for a second. Boo, boo. You spell Bobby Fischer correctly? Wow. I'd give you a sub if you weren't already a sub. Yeah. 